All right, fools. Welcome to the second video uh, tutorial on reverted gear train design, given target gear ratios. In this video, we're just gonna set up the Python IDE, get the PyMO environment imported, and start creating the model. If you guys hear a bubbling back background noise, it's because I'm smoking some shisha and uh, highly recommend you do the same if you're going to follow along otherwise you just won't have it as good of an experience as I am having so so go ahead and start off let's import the PyMO environment so you should already have PyMO installed I'm not going to hold your hand through that process um, so we're just going to do import asterisk and that just imports everything and then we're also going to import Imo.opt uh, solver factory. So the solver factory is basically our interface to the solvers, and this asterisk here is going to allow us to import the entire PyMO environment so we can build models. Uh, we also probably need NumPy. So import NumPy as NP. That's what I traditionally like to do. All right, so let's just get right into it. First off, we're designing for target gear ratios, so let's go ahead and defi define those uh, gear ratios. So we're going to do 4.3 for the forward ratio, and oh, let's just call it ratio instead of ratios. 9.1 for the reverse. Okay, so now what we're <coughs> what we're trying to do is we are solving for all the gear diameters, all of the, the gear tooth numbers, all of the gear diametral pitches, all of the gear face widths, and the center width between the shafts. So that if you counted that, that's one, two, three, four, five different variables, um, or different variable sets, because actually D, the diameter, is going to have eight, since we're doing we're doing uh, eight gears. Here, let me pull up this PowerPoint that I had here. Boom. All right. So if you if you can see this, um, we have eight gears. You can actually design a, a reverted gear train with nine gears, but in the in the nature of saving space and saving money, uh, we want to have less the least amount of parts. So to do that, we reuse gear number two basically and we keep gear one and five as the same actually if we wanted to <clears throat> reduce this even further we could get rid of gear five and just make it so that gear three and gear six shift along the shaft um, then we would even have one less gear but for this design let's just just calm down and keep it simple and just eight gears so 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 first off, we're gonna we're gonna create a guess. This is gonna be an initial guess for the the gear diameters that we're gonna use. So let's just create an array, and we're just we're just gonna number them off just like they are here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So gear one is four point five diameter, eleven point five for two, six point oh, ten point zero. If you're wondering why I put the zero, it's just because sometimes with Python, if you don't put the decimal, it interprets it as an integer, and sometimes you really just don't want that. Because as far as mathematics goes, Python is kind of stupid. So um, then we're going to guess for the teeth numbers. And if you guys are wondering where I got this stuff, I uh, this is actually one of my other designs that I did by hand before... Um, before doing this solver method and so actually that these uh, numbers are actually pretty close to the target ratios so 18, 46, 24, 40, 18, 20, 18, 72 ok so this is all good so those are going to be our two initial guesses so next, so that's for the diameter and for the number of teeth. 
Next, we're going to do the diametral pitch PGUS. Okay, so for P, first you got to understand P has to be the same for two meshing gears. So if you look here, one and two mesh, but also five and two mesh. So that's one unique diametral pitch for one, two, and five. That has to be the same for all of those gears. Okay? Similarly, three and four have a unique one because they alone mesh together. And then six, seven, and eight have their own. So in total, we have three unique diametral pitches. The first diametral pitch is going to be for gear one, two, and five. The second diametral pitch is going to be for four and three. The third diametral pitch is going to be for six, seven, and eight. Also, it's going to be the same for the face widths. One, two, and five are going to have the same face width right here, B. Three and four are going to have the same face width. And six, seven, eight are going to have the same one. So let's go ahead and put that in. So remember, I'm numbering these off exactly as they were. Since we only have three diametral pitches and three face widths that are unique, we don't need to repeat them because that we're just we'd be giving our solver harder, harder things to deal with. So let's also initialize our C guess. C is going to be the center distance. And we will put that as five, five inches. By the way, everything we're doing here is going to be in the English system. If you don't like that, then you don't have to. I'm not going to make you. So, um, so next, what we're going to want to do is I'm just going to create um, an index for the number of teeth and the diameter. So we're going to do that. We're going to use the arrange function from NumPy, zero to eight. So that's going to give us zero, one, two, three, up to seven, uh, because Python is based on a zero system. So we're not going to have one through eight. It's going to be zero through seven instead. We're also going to make an, uh, an index called index one for the diametral pitch and face width, because we only have three of them. We're just going to do two, up to three there. And now what we want to do is Pyomo takes initial guesses in the form of dictionaries. So we need to convert these to dictionaries. Um, I don't really like writing the dictionaries out by hand. So we're just going to use a, we're just going to iterate through for i and idx. And we're going to do d. First off, let's make some empty dictionaries. ddict n dict p dict b dict okay and we already have c we don't need a dictionary for c since it's a single value we don't need to so we do d dict i dict d dict d guess i <laughs> I'll do n dict i is n s i. So this that's uh, pretty straightforward. So we're just gonna go do go ahead and do this exact same thing, but for idx one and p. Okay, and now let's go ahead and see if this gave us some good results. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I, use, I like to use PyCharm CE as community edition um, because it gives me a nice clean separation between my workspace and the output. Uh, you can work in the command line, it doesn't matter, I just, I just don't like it, so make your own choices. Um, one thing you probably want to do for this project, if you're using PyCharm, go up and do uh, to run edit configurations like I just did, and do show command line afterwards. That way it can be really irritating to go through and the solver takes like two hours to solve, and then 
you have no way to like output if you forgot to output the solution or whatever then if you didn't do that your only choice would be to rerun the solver but correct your mistake so if you have the command line showing afterwards you get one of these down here so I can you know do access the variables that I had done so it returns those so this is working nicely so we have them arranged in dictionaries perfectly now so so I we did that in the in the interest of readability we'll just call this uh, we'll just do problem parameters and down here let's create the model so in Pymo there's two types of models there's a concrete model and there's an abstract model we are going to want to do a concrete model concrete model is a model where we provide the data as we build the model an abstract model is more versatile so we create the model without any data and then we can give it custom data later um, I don't really have experience with abstract models so we're going to do concrete um, and we're just going to call it model Okay, you can call it M, you can call it whatever you want but in the interest of readability we're going to call it model uh, and then we're going to declare the model variables so these are going to be the variables that we actually pass in to the solver and these are the variables we're solving for which were D, N, P, B, and C. So let's go ahead and do that. To declare a variable in PyMO, you're going to go here, name it. So we're going to call it D, because that's what it is, and a variable. And then we want to create the index for it. Okay, so there's the index, and that just basically means that we will be able to access each individual gear diameter by doing something like this one and I will give us the second one or seven and that will give us the eighth gear diameter so we just index them um, and then we're going to initialize and we're going to use the dict that dict that we created those are initial guess we put within and this is the domain of the variable so we're doing positive reals here. Real numbers, and they got to be positive. We can't have negative diameters. Bounds. For this problem, we're going to make a minimum gear diameter of 1.5 inches and a maximum of 30. Okay? You might you might be shitting bricks and like I don't want to make a gearbox with a 30 inch gear diameter. You don't have to. Uh, you can choose whatever bounds you want. If you want a smaller gearbox, put this as like 10. Just know that the smaller gearbox you make, the harder it is going to be to achieve these target ratios. Because in general, there's a trade-off between gearbox size and a gearbox accuracy to a given uh, to a given target ratio. So I'm I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward now, and you can look at the stuff later. You can I'll just fast forward, okay? Okay, now well, I got that all done. Uh, I'll just go ahead and highlight some of the important things here. First off, um, you'll notice the number of teeth is bounded um, between 18 and 300. So we have a minimum gear teeth amount, and this follows manufacturing guidelines. So we generally do not make gears with less than 18 teeth. So we'll put that as our minimum boundary, and our upper boundary of 300 is also pretty reasonable. Um, because for a lot of gear like stress uh, empirical methods that we've developed over the 200 years since the industrial revolution we have seen that uh, we kind of top out around here you don't have to but you know if you, you solve your own problem okay this is the one I'm solving um, also we've constrained it to be a positive integer 
Um, we've done that same thing with P, the diametral pitch, because uh, as I said in the, in the first video, P is standardized to be an integer, so we want that to be an integer too. Um, all the other ones are going to be in positive reals, so that means they're continuous variables that can take any real positive value. So, boom, we have all of our variables created and initialized. So let's just go ahead and run this to make sure we don't get any errors. Kind of want to do that at each step so you don't finish the whole thing and realize it doesn't work. Okay, it appears to be working because we're not getting any. Um, we're not getting any output. So here we go. Um, so that's going to be the end of the second tutorial video. In the third one, we'll go ahead and declare the objective function that we're going to optimize and we'll start working on the constraints. And so until then, uh, I'm out. Y'all have a good one.